Here's the 1095C. As an introduction, what I like to do is go through the form and then I will pick apart each section later. Now, the first question comes up, who do you have to give a 1095C for? This is a very common question I've been getting. Do you give uh, a 1095C to every employee, only those eligible for coverage? Who do you give it to? And the instructions say you give it to uh, any employee that's been full-time for a month, and full-time is defined as 130 hours or more. Now, this is reported on a calendar year basis, um, January through, so it's, it's everybody's in it, so no matter what your policy year is, everything is reported on a calendar year basis. And every employee, every full-time employee gets a copy. So in part one, it's the individual's name, social security number, street address, uh, their personal information goes there, and that's the employee. The applicable large employer is you, the employer. Now, if you're a company and you have three different divisions, and each division has their uh, own separate EIN, uh, each separate division should file their own 1095C that employs that particular individual. So please understand that. So member means um, it is the individual member of your control group. So again, if you have three different separate members of your control group, each one will file a 1095C for their employees. And that's the name of the employer, a street address, um, all the information has to go there. And then um, part two is the employer offer of coverage. Now, you have to put in, uh, enter the, when your uh, plan year starts, uh, so it starts in May, it'd be um, uh, 05. And then in um, line 14 is the offer of coverage. During a 2015, for those months, uh, when you offer that individual coverage. And when I go through it, over the next few minutes, what I'm going to do is tell you the popular codes that you should be considering. So, uh, did you offer coverage? If you did offer coverage, there's one code. If you did offer coverage, uh, depending on who you offered coverage to, was it offered to the entire family or just the employee? There's d different codes for that, and I'll go through each code. Line 15 is the employee share of lowest cost uh, premium. Now, it's not the program, it's not the coverage that, sh that they actually took, it's the lowest cost option you provided them. So if you offer the three uh, programs, three plans, they pick the most expensive plan, you don't report that, you, you report the lowest cost and it's for individual coverage only. So the, it's the employee share of the uh, lowest cost monthly premium for individual coverage. And this is going to be an important figure. Now, line 16 is the most complicated. There's a number of different situations that are reported in line 16. And I will go through uh, each one of those situations. Now, if, uh, if you're an employer that has full-time employees and people generally take your plan, you want to look at um, the first column at lines 14, 15, and 16. So if somebody is covered for all 12 months or the offer of coverage for all 12 months, that's the only thing you fill out is the first column. What's going to be complicated and difficult are for those of you who have a lot of variable hour employees or a lot of turnover because it could be a situation where you have two or three codes in each row. Um, so that's what makes it complicated to complete the form. Moving on to part three is the individual, and again, because you're self-insured, uh, you have to complete part three. 
uh, every individual covered, including the employee, has to be has to be listed there, and for what months they were covered under the plan. So again, you have to check the box. Um, if an employer provides self-insured coverage, check the box and enter the information for each covered individual. So again, if you're covering the whole family, and it would be the husband and wife and the three kids, it's those that are covered. And you have to indicate for what months they were offered. Now you'll notice there that you have to put the individual's name, social security number, and if you can't get the social security number, the date of birth. So again, there are certain um, employees that may object to giving the social security number. You at least have to ask uh, if they have one, and then if they don't, you have to ask for the date of birth. So they provide enough uh, boxes there and enough lines that goes on and on So again, uh, this is going to be has to be provided to employees by the end of March of this year. So that's when they have to be provided. Ten ninety four C. Each separate member of a control group must file their own ten ninety four C. So again, if you have a company with three different divisions. Each division will file their own 1094C. So the name and address of the employer, um, each separate member will file their own 1095C, 1094C. Line 7 and 8, the contact person's name and telephone number is indicated. Lines 9 through 16 are only completed if the entity is a designated governmental entity. If you're filing for other governmental entities, and line 18, the total number of 1095Cs to be filed must be indicated. And then on line 19, in, in most situations, you're going to indicate this is an authoritative transmittal, which means you have to complete the rest of the form. One authoritative transmittal must be filed for each employer. Um, and again, this is extreme. So each separate member of control group must file their own authoritative, trans authoritative transmittal I will tell you in the next few minutes what that means. Lines 22, 20 to 22 are completed only by the authoritative transmittal. Um, lines 20, you have to, again, uh, indicate the total number. In most situations, line 18 and line 20 uh, will be the same number. And then in line 21, you'll have to indicate whether you're a member of an aggregated LA group. What does that mean? It means, are you a member of a control group? If you're not, say no, and you have to complete a, uh, part three, column D. I will indicate that in the next few minutes. If you are a member of, of a control group, mark yes, and then you have to complete that column. Now, what's causing everybody problems is line 22. Uh, there are four boxes there. Box A is a qualifying offer method. A qualifying offer method, you can only use this method if you provided a qualifying offer, which means employees did not pay more than 9.5%, 9.5.6% of the federal poverty line. So a qualifying offer is an offer to one or more full-time employees for all months during the year for which the employee was a full-time employee and which was not in a limited non-assessment period. So it's 9.5%. Five six percent. If you did that, you can check that check that box. Now, if you do that, you have to use one A. And if you want to, you can do a, an alternative method of furnishing the employees a again a 1095C. And instead of providing them a 1095C, you can provide them with a statement that just indicates their name, address, EIN number, contact name, and telephone number statement indicating for all 12 months of the calendar year, the employee and his or her spouse and dependents receive a qualifying offer and therefore not eligible for premium credits and subsidies, and a statement directing the employee to see publication 974. Most employers are not doing that. They're just giving the employees a 1095C. Next is the qualifying offer transition relief, 
which means you offered a qualifying offer for some months and not for others. In this situation, uh, to be eligible to use this method, uh, you have to offer uh, coverage to 95% of the full-time employees. And if you do that, there, again, there's an alternative method. This is indicated in this column right here. Um, you can give them a statement indicating that their, uh, the employer's name, address, and telephone number, the contact name and telephone number, statement indicating that the employee and his or her spouse, if any, may be eligible for, for, for premium credits ta and tax credits for one or more months. The most important box is box C. Now, this is an extremely important box because of fact if you want any transition relief, you have to check this box. And there's two types of transition relief. One, if you're between 50 to 99, and the other if you're over 100. If you don't check that box, you don't get any transition relief. I urge all of you to check the box. This is the most important box that you want to check on the 1095C, 1094C. Uh, because if you don't check this transitional relief, you don't get it if you're between 50 to 99. If you don't check the box and the um, employer mandate, will be, you'll be subject to the employer mandate in 2015. The last box is box D, offer method. If you offer coverage to 98% of your full-time employees, their spouse and dependents, you can check this box. If you check this box, the advantage of checking this box is the fact that you don't have to, again, complete full-time employee count part three, column B. So you don't have to complete that box. Now, um, one thing I wanted to do, because I rushed through this, this is what I'm referring to. So again, um, I was referring to box tw uh, line 20, 21, and 22. These are the four boxes. Now, here is part three. Now, the first column is minimal and central coverage offer indicator. Um, the answer, yes or no. And the question they're asking is, did you offer coverage to 70% of your employees, full-time employees? If you answer yes, there's no penalty. If you answer no, there'd be a penalty. If you're between 50 to 99, you always have to answer yes. If you're 100 or more, you answer yes if you offered coverage to 70% of your employees. Column B, you have to put the full-time uh, count of employees. So for each month, the number of full-timers, and again, if you checked box D, you don't have to, ch again, put that number in there. Column C, total employee count. All your employees. And, and again, with the full-time count, you have to put in anyone in a waiting period or in a measurement period. Column D, aggregate group indicator. Um, were you part of a control group? If you were, you have to check the box. And what's important is the most important column in, in the 1095C is the last one. This is where you indicate that transitional relief applied to you. If between 50 and 99, you put column A. If, um, if you're over 100, you put code B. And lastly, if you're a member of a control group, you have to put all members of the control group in part four.